Hello and welcome to Flooring Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Tamiya's latest release. This is the 148 scale F35 Lightning II. It's a bit like a Marmite aircraft, this one. I know you've got people that absolutely love it, being the latest generation, the core with all the tech and all the gizmos and stuff. But from a modeling point of view, they can be quite boring because of all of that tech and gizmos is all hidden underneath very smooth skin gray jets as well but at least with this one you do get some very very nice touches with it so anyway let's have a look so you can see nice little bit of box art down in here so there's three types of f-35s out there i'm sure you all know that anyway but this is the basic one if you like the sort of all-rounder this is the a version then there's the b which is obviously the stovall version which is obviously uh, used for short takeoff and landings things like that and then obviously you've got the c which is the big brother if you like it's got a far bigger wingspan it's naval it's got foldy up wings and all the rest of it so again this is the the sort of first one out of the batch if you like so as you can see nice little bit of box art down on there you can see we got some of the bits and pieces on the side with this one so again you can see some of the ones so the color call out for this one it's basically saying about lp14 imperial japanese navy gray which is weird okay and then obviously using dark ghost gray which i get as well but again if that's going to work for ram colors i don't know actually it's talking about a mix here as well so it's talking about lp15 uh, with a little a bit of LP59 as well, making it up. Because again, RAM color can be a little bit difficult. We've got some nice marking options down in here as well. So as you can see, we've got New Zealand. Obviously, we've got Japanese Self-Defense Force. We've got Danish. We've got pretty much everyone's, as you can see, down in there as well. So very, very nice indeed. All right. Kit number for this particular one is 124. All right. And then, as you see, we've got some of the details down in here. So, again, we've got laser guided and um, um, GPS guided munitions, Sidewinder X, the new one, and obviously the latest AMRAM as well. And again, you can see some of the details just down in here like that. So, in the box, we are greeted by first time ever looking in this box. It's a bit weird because I'm out of touch with the ball. Again, we are that usual thing. Again, it's because. The nature of the aircraft we've got it as being the sort of i call it clamshell effects we've got a big top piece and a sort of you know a big bottom piece nice thing is we don't get any nasty wing joins just down in there then moving into some of the other parts so we've got very nice it looks like seamless intakes right the way through so that's quite nice we've got the tails and we've got the front end as well so very nice there now we've got the various parts we've got figure as well which looks nice as well cockpit detail clear parts or some of the clear parts at least so we've got the sensors under the chin so we'll keep those separate one of the highlights of this kit does it appear to be the actual weapons bay highly highly detailed all right just down in there like that and then obviously we've got the vertical tails again very nice some of the details down in here typical tamiya's nice clean area and i assume we've probably got a dual one here again same thing for pylons and weaponry we've got two no, we don't. We get one canopy. Again, we'll have to have a look at this and see why we get two canopies of the same. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And then, as always with Tamiya, we do get a really nice pack. So we've got huge decals down in here. Again, we'll have a proper look at that in a moment. And then, obviously, down in here, we've got a big old pack. As you can see in here, we've got a couple of bits of metal as well. So, again, if we can just pop in here. Over. all right so we pop that down in there what we are greeted by we've got these two pins the long pins as you can see like that so we'll look at those in a second we've got a little bit of a fact sheet usual thing with it just like that so have a look at that we've got the instruction book as you might imagine how to model and then obviously we've got the giant color pull outs as well the decal placements and things like that all right so we'll have a proper look at those in a moment all right so if we just start off in the if we do the little fact sheet first so we've got the background guide comes with pretty much all of their ones and again we've got it just down in here so obviously we've got some of the areas to look out for just down in here and i hope it's in english on this side which it is so obviously it talks about the helmet it talks about obviously it's in service the different types we were saying about the wing fold-up version does make you wonder if tamia are going to do all three 
knowing their history of doing not doing it when you want them to but anyway uh, and then right the way through so we've got some of the areas down in here so we've got the apg uh, 81 got the acer radar set down in there again it's quite boring doesn't have any moving parts uh so again and then targeting pods underneath there and then again we've got the ejector seat some of the things area coating areas and stuff which i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole because i've spoken about it way too much get into trouble so we've got all of that down in there so you can familiarize yourself with that little bit of information then we are down into the old instructions for this oh a correction sheet that's something you don't get very often from tamia let's face it so looking like we just got a couple of areas on there i don't know what they'll be you can have a look at that properly uh, a little bit later and then straight into it so usual versions you've got a through j for the different versions down in here and again so if you're doing something like the norwegian version just look out they could be kit specific and again australian we've got netherlands the italian one israeli republic of korea and obviously the dutch one so just keep an eye out uh, for any subtle changes that might be in there so if it does suddenly call out for a b version you know that's going to be the japanese one only all right so usual thing opening up a few holes cleaning it up obviously once you've got it off the sprues uh, down in there it looks like they're one mil and 1.5 mil holes right the way through and then just going straight into it on the top so again we've got the various sensors up here as well so we've actually got the various parts being fitted into the front the sensors on the front lots of sensor area on this one so again you're going to be using i assume i'm hoping somewhere in here we do get some uh, masking sets for it because this is what these are for these are all b9 is on the top this is because it's got cameras and infrared searches which obviously detect uh incoming missiles as well as obviously the pilot can use to look through things which is damn cool uh so we've got all of those going on into the cockpit again you're not going to be blown away by all the detail because it has got a huge i think it's a 27 inch touch screen uh on the front so there's not a ton of switches and buttons like you might find on conventional aircraft so anyway those in tub gets fitted down into this one and then we're straight over here into the nose wheel well going through on this one right the way through and it looks like which is a nice touch you can actually have the gear folded up just for the minute maybe so you don't have the gear leg hanging out all the way through so that's a nice touch if it is okay then we're working on the forward fuselage so by the time obviously we get that one in we can get the various parts in this is the boarding ladder area being fitted to the inside then we've got the top down seamless intakes i expect they are because obviously this is tamia should be quite straightforward fitting those in and then obviously you've got the lower half with those seamless intakes feed into that engine being fitted down here at the bottom to the actual lower fuselage again depending on versions you're doing up here depends on what you're actually be carrying so you've got your ordnance guide down in here so again you can uh, have a, a feel out for what type of loadouts you want so if you want to go with something a little bit stealthy you can go with something a little bit sort of air to air mode or you can go through for a complete beast with everything hanging off of it again opening up the holes as required and then obviously lumps and bumps being fitted down to the underside it's talking about here i assume about the ram tape being fitted in uh already and again this is a, a yeah it's a hole you don't want to go down let's face it beautiful detailed instructions about doing the actual main well which to be honest is the highlight on this kit because there's some fantastic details down in there right the way through then we're getting going to go in on the engine so we've got the first stage uh, compressor being fitted down there at the back and then all the other areas being fitted down into the hosing the piping and all the bits and pieces you might imagine down in that weapon bay which again you might as well display this thing upside down because that's where all the detail is again loads of detail going down into these areas you might imagine then we've got the situation sandwich in the top so this is the inside of the wheel wells the various areas going down on that completing off that underside then we've obviously got the gear doors and panels and various things so the bay doors panels and things like that all being fitted down in there again talking about round tape placement rear nozzle being fitted to into that one as well looks to be very nice main gear being fitted doors so forth and so on and that's a nice touch so it does you can literally then click off that back part and then have the gear swung open so you don't lose your front leg at an early date again main doors all being fitted onto this one so that's for the front nose wells being fitted we've got the sensor system and the track system being fitted down here at the front with the glass being fitted onto it and again depending on weapons loadout what you're going to be doing with doors open and closed right the way through weapons fit so obviously we've got your gbus being fitted down in there 
um, you know, going in, so that's fine. And then obviously all the other parts for your air-to-air -air weapons, more doors and options open and closed, options open and closed as well for the sort of clapperons uh, on these ones on the back end of it. Tails, uh, so you've got those on, slats for the front, and then pylon system being fitted right the way through, and then obviously depending on your weapons loadout, of exactly what you want. Uh, rest of the tails being fitted down onto this one. Nav lights being fitted to the outside, and then you've got the ejection seat being fitted down into this one right the way through. Then we've actually got the pilot figure being seated in there. Instrument panel, that big old touchscreen being fitted down into there. And then we've got the boarding ladder obviously stowed or in the open position. We do get masking as well, quite nice touch, and it's masking on the inside, which you probably could do with this one. This one does have a forward opening canopy. So again, it, uh, it's got the deck cord all around it as well for blowing that. And that completes it. Very nice, very, very cool. Right, so we've got down in here stencil marking for the uh, A version. So again, you've got four stencils in different versions, and these are, I think, one-to-one -one scale. So again, you can see down in here, so this is stencils for that one, as you can see. And then over on here, this is the A versions, right the one down, which is from Hill. Very nice indeed. And then we've got another one over here as well for the round coating areas and again I don't want to go down and get caught up on this round coating thing but it's an area of this aircraft that gets way way too much attention uh, I think it's over detailed on most kits and the thing about going through also the big thing is now and this could be because being a bit late to the party uh, but they don't actually have the ram tape in this color now somebody's actually done it properly it's a bit like f1 when they've got matte coated finishing uh, on the cars and then they use um you know shiny clear tape somebody has come up with an idea now of using matte tape and obviously on here the ram tape which is then um, obviously put over any joints and seams is now the same color as the aircraft so uh, you don't really have it doesn't make it as cool looking but hey you've got all of that down in there so again You've got ram coating. So this is then the overcoat version as we were talking about. So you don't get the ram coating on it, which again, is personal choice in which way you want to do it. All right. So it's the later version or the early version with the ram coatings. More information. So we've got all these down in here and I won't get all of these out, but it is literally sheets for each of them. So obviously we've got the Norwegian one down in here. We've got the Australian one. And then we've got more and more sheets about this. So down in here, we've got the Italian Air Force one and then all the other countries, as you might expect. So you've got full details for all of those right the way through. So into the actual gubbings of this. Let's play it in. Okay, so... We are greeted by is round tape. Again, the problem I have with round tape done like this, although it's fantastic and it's very easy, you've got to get your colours spot on so they don't clash with this. So I highly recommend you do some test spraying to see how this will be in contrast to your original colour. Because again, sometimes they can be just pretty much a spot on match, no problem. Other times they can be, to be honest, almost you can't see it because your paint color may be the same so again just being a little bit aware of what this is it's well worth doing a quick color swatch onto a piece of plastic card putting it against this and see how it's going to compare to your actual model all right so we've got one of those we've got all the markings just down in here as you can see and to be honest they're very very nice indeed so quick more of a zoomy look as you can see just down in here so we've got the hill ones so we've got the Japanese, Norwegian, Netherlands, we've got the Israeli, Australia, Italy, Korea, and Denmark. Danish ones look nice because they're in proper colour. Okay, so we do get mask set. As we say, we've got that one down in there. So we've got all the little masks. Again, it's not die cut. Tammy, don't do die cut. One day they will. But so you are going to have to cut those out or go down aftermarket. But then we've got other decals. I won't bother getting these out. As you can see, this is all the small little tiny little areas for the weapons and the areas like that all right so that's quite nice we do get these which i didn't see in the old instructions but i'm sure they're used somewhere so we've got a couple of pins uh, down in this one so again again i'm gonna say it because and then i'll leave it alone honestly but i've yet to see a single company who's done the ram coating on the top like this or these ram areas 
I would call it in scale. They're either just a little bit too strong or it's non-existent. But again, when you move down into the closeness of this, you can see it just sits a little bit too high. So again, by the time you get like a matte finish over this, hopefully it will kill a lot of this off. I'm just saying it's just a little bit too strong. It must be incredibly difficult to try and mold something with it to the right thickness. But if anyone could do it, let's face it, Tamiya could. I'm assuming what they're doing is they're doing this with the height of the round tape installed onto it afterwards. But obviously you're going to be deckling over the top of this as well in some cases. But if you look at modern F35s now, um, you know, A, Bs and C versions of it, it's not that strong. It's more subtle. It's a real subtle area. But again, I've yet to see any company sort of get that right. But again, down in here, you can see how it is. It's nice because it's one piece, so we don't have any wing joints or anything really annoying. But as you can see, it's it's what I would like to see is these areas here on the wings. You see how subtle they are? They're hardly there. They're just, you know, enough to show. That's what I want to see on this. And then that way it'll be spot on, but everybody overdoes it. You almost want them to be like a ghosting on the surface. And that's how they look in reality. You know, things like, obviously we've got the refueling door on that. They're a little bit more prominent, but everywhere else should be subtle, subtle. So again, they can do it here, but not on here. Again, it's not a detraction from the kit, because especially if you're going to put the RAM markings all over it, because it'll be great because you can see exactly where they're going. But this type of thing on the wing, I think is spot on. The rest of it, I think is a little bit maybe overdone. Okay, so underside, again, very, very busy. Lots and lots of detail down underneath here with the RAM. And then again, I think it's slightly overdone, but I'm going to stop going on about it now. So what you can see is on the wings there, down the back end, looks all very nice. Down between those bays, big old bays down in here. Again, I do wonder if they're going to be bringing out, it would be nice if they did bring out the uh, B, because again, that would work really very, very well on this one. So again, you can see down in here for opening up these holes for the pylons and the various bits and pieces, and you can see how they're molded all the way through, which is a really nice touch with these. So again, some very, very nice detail parts all the way in here. And funny the details they got down in here for the strengthening areas and things, how it's all gonna sit in. So again, cleverly nice design all the way through. Okay, so there we go. That's the front part. Nice, almost sort of slide molding down in here, this framework on this front end. As you can see, it's very, very nicely done. So we've got the sensors down in here for the sensor area is going to be fitted all just down in here. Again, this one here, as it would be, looks a lot more subtle on the front end than it does over the rest of it. And that's what you want. It should be subtle. Got the boarding area just down in here. Again, there's not a lot going on in the inside, as you might imagine. And then over here, we've got your tails. So these are your horizontal stabs at the back. And again, it, it just shows how it can be done because these are a lot more subtle just down in here, the sort of, you know, these areas. And that's what I'd love to see over it. And again, these are a little bit too sharp and too heavy just down the back here. Again, I can't work out why, if it's a visual thing or a manufacturing problem. But again, really very, very nice. Interesting on the insides as well. Very nice. Okay. So down in here, we've got the nozzle area. Or sorry, intake area and things like that. Which is very nice. And again, straight off the bat, as you can probably see, we have got zero eject pins. These bays are really very nice. And then down in here in the engine areas, yeah, no, this is back to being really very, very nice Tamiya. So again, this is the thing with a cockpit, and I'm not sure, because obviously it's open and closed, but the detail is slightly, slightly different. So again, what we're talking about is here. So that's why we get two canopies open and closed. So we've got the front area, as you can see, just down in here with the little ones down in here. And then obviously we've got the one down in here with the open position. It's just slightly different. I assume it must have a little something that moves in here. You'd think they'd be identical, but just without this tab underneath, which is for it being the up position. And again, the up position has got all the locks on the underside and all the details are obviously the closed one 
doesn't because obviously it needs to be a nice so again really nice touch with that with both of them down in there these intakes are beautifully done and molded and been polished to a really nice sort of satin finish right the way through and again we've got the back end engine one the veining across this guy down in here as you can see really sawtooth very very sharp really nice no eject pins down in here for the actual intake there's the first stage compressor really nice backstage for the nozzles on there as well which they're all going to join to and again you won't see any of these there's a few little eject pins just around in there but it should be fine clever really nice complex molding to get this shape down in here for the intakes and i think they've absolutely nailed it because that looks absolutely beautiful very very nice indeed very very must have been a nightmare to tool that because it's not a straightforward shape at all okay right where are we doing next let's have a another big piece okay so oh it's a sealed bag what is out of date okay so all right so as you can see loads and loads of detail down in here we've got the structural parts we've got a lot going on all right that's start over on this end so as you can see this is the main gear obviously it'll be upside down so you've got your wiring hydraulic -y bits just down in there these are your wing strengtheners which Again, if you look at it, it's proper strong. That's proper beefy. That's got no flex in it whatsoever. This box section down in here has done an absolutely fantastic job. Again, it's funny how they put all this in. It's, I don't see any of it, but hey, it's all there. Nice. Okay, so moving down, as you can see, loads of detail. Cockpit area, again, behind the seats, we've got the main gear. We've got the pilot figure. We've got the tub. Obviously, we've got the instrument panel can have a big old decal right across that we've got the ejection seat down in here we've got the outer pylons we've got sensors we've got all bits down in here for the main gear as you might imagine veto sensors stuff like that inside the cockpit tub as you might imagine there's literally nailed there's not a lot of detail down here. there's only a couple of switches and that's about it but again nice touches down the back of the seat highly highly detailed all the way through we don't have a solid pilot figure they've cut him out now so there's no bits down in there like that, but generally all very, very nice indeed. <clears throat> okay, back to staples. Okay, so we've got down in here, again, main gear. We've got the vertical tails. This nose gear is beautiful. I suppose when the, the aircraft itself is a little bit plain, shall we say, not a lot going on, you can spend a lot of time detailing areas with detail like the nose gear that's probably the most detailed nose gear i think i've ever seen and again clever the way this is actually a really delicate nose wheel i thought it'd be a bit more beefy than that but it's quite delicate and you can see you've got the box at the back and that's what you're going to snip off to allow it to rotate up but even these little arms coming across you can see how spindly they are there's not a lot of meat on that it's going to be quite a delicate nose gear and again i know we've got the brace in there but it looks quite delicate and again, down in here, we've got those uh, slats and the flapper wands, I think they are on this. And then we've got the tails. So these are the vertical tails. And again, see how subtle that is. Why can't we all be like that? If it's out in there everywhere, it'd be mega. And again, main gear, framework, all the various parts. And again, main gear down in here. Looks very, very nice indeed. Can't fault any of that does look good we're not worried about uh, eject pins inside here because obviously we've got these these ones down in here are going to go on the inside of these so no eject pins were shown in the making of this model which is good okay right last big bag again and again this is to be honest for me the highlight of this kit is that main well the way that they've actually done the detail down in here is absolutely amazing so straight off the bat look at that loads of detail there was i think for an older kit shall we say a resin one that looked just like that and that was always one of those where i wanted to build it because that resin piece in there but now you've got it in styrene it would be a lot easier but again the amount of detail molded in one is just absolutely fantastic it just shows you the quality of the detail down in here to mold all of that in one short of going through as a lot of us would 
um, you know, wiring it up with a little bit of wet lead wire and trying it that way. It's a lot of work. So you're going to need your postcard pens for doing all your cabling and that in there, that's for certain. Very, very nice indeed. So if we, I'll tell you what, we'll start on that one. So we've got all these down in here. This is all your actuators for it, all the various things up here at the top. So you've got your weapons bay inside and out and the actuators for those. More of the bay, obviously, don't forget it folds open. And we've got it sealed up as well. So we've got two types. This is we've got it all sealed up or you've got it open. And then last off down in here, we've got some of the back areas. Again, looking very, very nice, very smart, good, good level of detail, more piping. Generally, fantastic, very, very nice indeed. And again, the complexity on the rear, clever, cleverly done, very, very nicely done. Hold on, Tamiya. Yep, stepped up to the bar. Okay, last main screws. We'll move on to the clears. We've got a dual, exactly the same, going to be down in here. So, uh, yes, yeah, so you've got your GPS guided bombs just up here, these big ones, big 2000 pounders. And then we've got the nozzles, which are very nice. And again, you've got insides to these and the outside section. So you've got three each way. So there's six in total. So again, no problem with those. Then we've got the pylons. We've got the AIM-120Cs. We've got the AIM-9X. Very nice. And then down in here, uh, are they GBU 16s, I think? Again, which is the 500 pound laser guided bombs as well. And then obviously we've got the wheels as well. And again, shame there's no weight on wheels. Tammy don't seem to do weight on wheels. So flat spot required on there. Okay. Okay, last up, we've got a couple of little clear parts just down in here. So we've got, this is for all those sensors, as you can see down on here, people, uh, as you can see. So we've got the big one down the bottom. Fair enough. Luckily you do get MR set for this. So that's quite handy. And obviously we've got the top one, the one behind the back and all the other areas, the front ones as well. Uh, so yeah, very nicely done. Good level of detail right the way through on that. Then we get the two cockpits. So I assume these are both the same because these are just the outer parts of it, but you're going to have interchangeable cockpit glass. So I assume this is just H and this is H. So yes, we do get two of these. So we're not worried about that. And again, they're both in the tint. So there's sort of that uh, gold tint to them, which is quite nice. And again, there is the finest of fine in fact i can't even tell if that's a center thing i tell you what they've actually aced this clear part let's face it tamia's f16 had a few little problems shall we say for some of the kits but this they've absolutely aced can you see how thin this line is that runs across and comes down the side and it actually has that but you can see how they've absolutely aced that clear part to be honest that's probably the finest detail on a clear part I think I've ever seen. That's incredible. Very, very nice. Again, doesn't have deck cord traditionally. Being a forward opening canopy, it means it can't actually, you can't blow it off because it won't go. So they have to detonate it and the deck cord is hidden all the way around the outside edge and then frosts it and then you go through it. So again, strange, different way of doing it, but hey ho. Very nice. Last time we had a canopy that went that way. I wasn't that on a MiG-21, the early MiG-21s, instead of that way. I don't know what the thinking is. Can't work that one out. Probably because I can't put any mechanism behind here because of what's behind the seat, maybe. So, uh, but no, really very, very nice indeed. There you have it. Has Tamiya come out with an amazing kit? I tell you what, I am slightly drawn. I think the RAM is always, with every manufacturer, is slightly overdone. If it was just a little bit more subtle, I think it would absolutely be an ace kit. The wheel well, for the nose wheel well, I don't think I've ever seen one that detailed. Not even the old monogram ones were that good. That is amazing. The main weapons bay is a joy to behold and is amazing. And I think if you're going to display it, I'll display it upside down because it will look, you know, all your work's going to go there. Otherwise, you're not going to see it but it is good. The clear parts, I have to say, they are probably the clearest clear part with the finest detail I've ever seen on any injection molded canopy 
ever in my entire life. So that's absolutely fantastic. And just generally looking around the way that the nose gear folds up until you actually need it. And then obviously it doesn't get knocked off. Let's face it, we've all built kits before with the nose gear you put on in step two, and then you're worrying yourself to death about knocking it off through the rest of the entire build. Having just literally finished their uh, F-15C, uh, the 32nd one, that's the trouble you've got. You've got the gear hanging there through the entire of your build. So that's a nice touch as well. It does look a very, very dainty, but be careful with it. But it's nice to say it's out of the way because I think a couple of hits, you're going to be in real trouble with it. Marking options for this thing, you've got everything you could ever want down in there. I don't think they've probably missed anybody off the list. So you've got all the ones if you wanted to do that one for an A. I'm really, really hopeful they bring out a B. If Tammy bring out a B, I think it'll be an absolute winner because that way we can do the sort of Royal Air Force Royal Navy one as well. So that would be very, very nice. And again, if we saw the C come down the line, that would be amazing. Are we going to see them? No, in Tamiya, probably not because it's a bit like their F-16. They never did a two-seat version, yet it was all ready for it. Why not Tamiya? Because that would have been a great kit as well. Anyway, I am not disappointed. As always, Tamiya have risen up the bar again. The clear part is absolutely amazing. The detail in the bays and all the rest of it. Just for me, a small letdown again is that round tape height thing that's all over this kit. Just needs to be a little bit more subtle and it will be technically the perfect kit. Looking forward to building this one in the future, so it's definitely going to be going into my stash. Anyway, there we go. That's the Tamiya 148 scale F35A Lightning 2.